AMD has mocked Nvidia several times over the GPU VRAM size and while there is no doubt that AMD does provide more video memory than Nvidia GPUs, it failed to do so for its budget graphics cards like the RX 7600. While for many, the 7600 isn't a deal breaker because it only boasts 8GB of VRAM, I think it's still not that bad considering that we hardly have any GPU under $300 that brings more than 8GB of memory. This is why gamers still hesitate to buy the RX 7600 over the more expensive RTX 4060. Even though the the former is almost as powerful as the latter. The only thing possibly breaking this VRAM curse is a new GPU called the RX 7600 XT. Fortunately, this is not a rumor anymore because in a recent leak, this GPU was spotted on the EEC website. The EEC website listed two models of the PowerColor RX 7600 XT, one with 10 gigs of VRAM and the other one with 12 gigabytes. So this is exactly how AMD went with the last generation RX 6700 and 6700 XT. Therefore, we can expect a 160-bit memory memory bus width on the 10GB model and a 192-bit bus on the 12GB one. Now there are two things we have to consider before we can make any conclusions about this GPU. One is its performance and the other one is pricing. If we consider the former then the RX 7600 XT should be at least 15% faster than the 7600 because that is roughly the performance difference between the RX 6600 and the 6600 XT. Now most likely 7600 XT will be using the same Navi 33 die as the non-XT one but it should be Navi 33 XT instead of 33 XL and this should result in more compute units and also more stream processors. That said, don't be surprised if this brings higher TDP than the 7600. Still, all of this can be tolerated if AMD prices it right. Considering that AMD launched the RX 7600 for $50 lower than what it launched the RX 6600 for, I expect that the RX 7600 XT should cost no more than $329. This will also be $50 cheaper than the last gen RX 6600 XT and will make a great competitor to the RTX 4060. If AMD can manage to do so, I'm sure that RX 7600 XT can become the top favorite and possibly the sweet spot GPU for millions of gamers around the globe. A GPU that brings 10GB or 12GB of VRAM for $330 will be much more appealing than the RTX 4060 because we know how modern day games feed on the VRAM. I don't know if AMD will have different pricing for 10 and 12GB editions but I wouldn't pay more than $350 for the 12GB one. At this price, it will be still a decent card that won't have to struggle at 1440p resolution and it's quite possible that AMD won't price it close to $400 because we already have the RX 7700 XT at $449 which doesn't make much sense when the significantly faster 7800 XT is just $50 more expensive. Let's see what plans AMD has for these GPUs and we can possibly see them launching pretty soon. Next, we have a big update on the Starfield title. The game which has destroyed even high-end GPUs even with FSR turned on is finally getting DLSS support officially. Up until now, some users were using mods to turn DLSS on in the game but Bethesda recently made a big announcement on Twitter. It said that the first update will fix the top issues gamers are experiencing with the game and the next update will add several features that will include Nvidia DLSS. Apart from that, it will also get dual ultra-wide resolution support, NHDR calibration menu and some more useful features. So finally gamers won't have to use any mod to turn on DLSS and it will make both performance and visual quality better on the RTX GPUs. It's not clear when this update will be released officially but this is necessary because the current state of the game sucks and it needs way too many optimizations. I hope that this game can run on a GPU like the RX 7600 or 4060 at 1080p with at least 50 FPS with future optimizations otherwise it will lose its appeal to budget gamers. Bethesda said that their current priority is to fix any bug or stability issues and they are also working with all three GPU manufacturers for more optimizations. And lastly, a big update for Cyberpunk 2077 is just ahead that will supposedly utilize 8 core CPUs up to 90%. The report comes from CDR programmer Philip who announced patch 2.0 with an important update for high core count CPUs. He said that the game can now utilize up to 90% of 8 cores on a CPU and the user should make necessary adjustments for cooling their computers. He also recommended using Cinebench to figure out the stability of their systems when the CPU is at high load. Now even though this won't be comparable to gaming, this is still a sign for players that if they are using a basic CPU cooler, they should upgrade to a better one or at least make proper ventilation inside the case. Moreover, when a user asked about whether 90% of CPU usage will work even with SMT turned on on AMD Ryzen CPUs, he said that it will be supported natively and hence no mod is needed. If you don't know, the Ryzen CPUs with SMT or hyper threading turned on have some problems running the game properly and users had to use mods to fix this problem. However, with this patch, gamers will no longer need to use 
external mods or turn off SMT at all. Now on one hand it's good to see that this problem is finally getting fixed but on the other hand the publisher took 2 years to fix something silly like this. I hope this patch will unlock more performance in game with Ryzen CPUs especially with 3D CPUs that feature 8 cores because a combo like that of Ryzen 7800X 3D and RTX 4090 would make the deadliest gaming combo of all time. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below and also share your opinions on the Radeon RX 7600 XT. Lastly hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure to turn on the notifications to never miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one.